<laughs> so yeah, um, what's your comment about this game though? Um, your comment in this game is that we have we had high prob win probability for the first 20 minutes of the game. Something that happened in the game made the uh, game swing in enemies' uh, favor. Any advice on how to keep your team snowballing um, throughout the game? Um, well, let's take a look in their draft in here. Um, Q-Podge. Um, they have... Or, since you're, you're gonna play with um, Monkey King in the safe lane in here? And based on the laning, uh, it was Lena mid, I hope. Lena mid, yeah. And then Hoodwing and LC bottom. Um, when it comes to the bottom lane though, like they have um, Ursa and a Witch Doctor. I think the Ursa will kind of okay lane. It, it can go both ways because they have both um, stuns and then setups and then high burst damage. Um, but if if the Orza is left alone, let's say the, uh, the the Hoodwing is rotating, and the Witch Doctor stayed in the lane, I think it will it can go to the uh, Regent's favor, and naturally the Orza should win to any uh, melee matchups because of the Fury Swipes stacking. Um, SF though against Lina, and then possibly Void, and then Punch in here. I actually want to have like SF and then Punch in the lane, just so they will have like both uh, range and then melee heroes in the lane so they will not actually struggle but yeah you have Trent and then um, Monkey King so your lineup actually excel at uh, we could say fighting outside or inside the pitch uh, or the uh, Russian pit and when it comes to the high ground siege it's kind of difficult for you guys to do it because of the punch repositioning um, hero so if you if you don't kill them outside of the base and then you decided to go for push, I think it's you, you can easily get punished uh, for that. So I think um, it's more of a vision game for the mid game. Even though um, I, I'm not sure if you win the, the lane like all three lanes in here. Yeah, but because I feel like you you should uh, win like the mid and then the top lane aside from the uh, bottom lane because it's Orsa against Elsie. But yeah, the question is really the mid game, the vision game, most importantly. Um, they have Podge, you know. Your 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 actual initiator in here is that the LC follow up Hoodwing. Um, if Lina will initiate, maybe he she will get hooked and then possibly will die. So it's not the greatest initiators. So yeah, um, it's more of an initiator and map awareness and then uh, warding as well. So, um, since you're playing the position 5 in here, um, you punch, I want to see how you actually play around the map and see if you're playing in the right place at the right time. Uh, maybe you're farming too much or maybe uh, you're fighting too much. That's what we're gonna check for. And I'm not sure about this nature's grass, like curly, yeah? Because you can always go for that. Um, dissimilate. Let's see it here. Yeah. Let's see it one more time, one more time. So here, um, you're possibly scouting. Scouting heroes. Okay. And yeah. You you, you actually scouted that he uh, he still have the observer, which is actually nice for you to do it. But you know that it's still not worded uh, on that hill. I actually want you to continue doing that. Like checking the items of the enemy. Uh, but the question is, uh, does the Void Spirit manage to scout your ward? And I guess you want to contest the bottom or to, to this rune? It's kind of hard though, because the Pudge is still missing. Yeah, Pudge is in bottom. Okay. First blood. First blood. Um. Another thing that I could suggest to um, Q-Podge, like, um, since you're going to play with the Monkey King, uh, n the, the kill potential early is very low. We're talking about Monkey King, right? Um, only a root Venom. If you go for stun, that's it. Critical damage is only 150%. Uh, usually, 
Jingo Mastery is the one that they will go for, but I feel like you should go for Boundless Strike in here just to secure the range trips. And you, on the other hand, like uh, playing with the uh, Monkey King did not actually uh, help. Aside from scouting this um, Void Spirit and then scaring him away, um, I suggest that you just give the um, Observer and then turn to the Monkey King and you actually play with your teammates, especially the uh, Lena, Elsie, um, and Hoodwink. And in that sense, you could easily um, get the advantage in the early on. Like, especially that they're all missing. Maybe contest the, uh, the rune with your team instead of um, playing with your Monkey King because really ineffective. So yeah, let, let's see it in here. Nature's Grasp. Um, another thing as well is that um, you didn't check the items of your team, like your Monkey King. So both of you have like Orbit Venom. Something that um, I will not recommend. Like maybe sell it immediately now because it, it doesn't stack. And yeah, you, you wasted your Q right there. But I think it's actually fine if you go to him like right this. You wasted your Q. Um, again, he got the um, dissimulate on the guy. He got dissimulate on the Void Spirit, so never use it until you know that he already uses the dissimulate. And I don't know what you're trying to do in here. So um, at, at this point, Q Podge, you just need to use your um, Nature's Grasp once the uh, Void Spirit uses his um, dissimulate or going to the Pudge. That's all that matters right now. And yeah, I, I'm not clear about the Sentry as well. It's too early. You can just right click this guy, but again, this is not stacking. Ways of Q. At this point, you should um, go back and then try to deny those creeps. Because here, the creep wave is coming soon. And you're actually trading two, two versus one. Right? Pudge and then uh, Void Spirit is actually hitting you. And now the creeps are here, so your main priority should be going back to the lane, fixing the equilibrium and not take a lot of damage in the process. So now you're forced to use salve, like way too early. Look at this, this guy is possibly dead. And then you're pulling, okay. Pull, okay. Not sure about this pull though, because uh, Monkey King is getting harassed by the creeps. So the, the uh, creep equilibrium is really important. And you're actually going for double pull right here. The Void Spirit just respawned. You can actually go and budge. Like, they cannot stop you right now. Because of Urban Venom, I don't know why you're so afraid. Wait, wait, wait. Let me check in here first. Hold on. Um, I, I haven't seen you check the item of Pudge, by the way, so maybe uh, that's why you're, you're not committing to this guy. Because here at this point, this is actually a kill for me. This is actually a kill. You go for Nature's Grasp and then go for Venom. Right click. You know that the Void Spirit has the Simulate, right? Level 1. And it's still level 1. So he cannot stop you from diving into that Pudge. And the Pudge is not going to fight you back because you're you're um you're so healthy and then he's very low. So that's actually an opportunity for kill right there. Or at least some pressure. Imagine you're bullying both of them and then you're only alone. And monkey is actually having a free lane. Go back to your um, nature's grasp first and then yeah, fight. And yeah, keep going. Yep, keep going. He still got the simulate, right? Yeah, perfect. Much better? Yeah. But do you really need the uh, the Monkey King to play with you like, at this point? Because to me, if you're gonna call the uh, Monkey King at this point just to help you do your job, like here, three creeps and experience, soul experience, right? Three creeps. And look at the trade. He didn't even get the last hit at this point. Right? Didn't get last hit. 151 gold. And yeah. He only got 23 gold. So it's basically uh, not worth it at that point. Like, he, he will leave the lane. 
two or three creeps right there just to help you? Nah. If I'm the carry in there, I will not help you right there. Because it's not really worth it. And just an additional info. If the Pudge died with that engagement, he will be back with full HP and mana. And possibly he could refill the bottle for his mid or possibly gank the mid. Because he is a Pudge after all. Pull. Um, I'm not sure about this pull though. Uh, because um, one of the good things that I you could that you could try as a support, since it's almost um, three minutes, you could actually try to stack it first, and then after stacking it, you you pull by fifteen. Because um, the, the enemy will have like double wave. Look at the crit wave. Full wave, another full wave. So the enemy will have like double wave in here. Even though you actually um, win the lane, but since you have like double wave and the, the, the lanings are being pushed, the Void Spirit will get something out of the lane, like experience-wise. So y y you, sh you need to know those things like equilibrium-wise. And yeah, since, since the positioning of the uh, Crips are actually in here, you cannot easily pressure them. Because if you do, and you don't see the Pudge, they can just hook you. Right here. Good thing he missed. Because if he didn't miss right there, uh, he should he should try to hide in here at least. If that didn't miss, I think the Monkey King is dead. Nah, it's not gonna happen. There's a lot of creeps right here. It's not gonna happen. It's actually better if you just push the lane right now. So you could um, reset the Equilibrium. And please don't pull. Please no. You should not pull. There is a big wave still. Uh, I guess Monkey King is fine since it's only both. Uh, it's only uh, two melee heroes and no magic output. But yeah, since you pulled, the enemy just pulled as well, which is. You cannot contest because there are two heroes right there and you're only alone. And the Monkey King is kind of busy with the uh, with the lane creeps. Now he's done trying to contest it. Okay, going back. We're getting harassed a bit by just creeps. Stacking? No, I didn't stack. You're gonna pull again? It's actually a catapult wave. Q podge. Maybe uh try to contest it since it's catapult wave. Like try to pressure the enemy and then you still have fortification if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You're going to pull in here. Yeah, you're not actually abusing the timing in here. Uh but it's fine. The lane is actually okay, but since you decided to prioritize the pulling that actually slowed down the pace of this laning stage um, to the point that the enemy is getting farmed as well. Um, if I were you, I should play more aggressive at this point of the game because um, you're you're a trend protector support, and as the game progressed, you will not be that effective anymore. So before ten minutes, you are one of the strongest hero on the map. The question is, are you going to utilize it or not? A good rate, good rotation at least. You managed to kill the, uh, secure the kill on the, uh, on, a, on the uh, SF right there. But I feel like it should not happen in the first place because you, you didn't even smoke or anything. Maybe their top lane didn't report that you are missing and there's no vision for him in the river. So yeah, but the point is, um, in the higher MMR though, it's not gonna happen. Maybe, maybe it's working only on the legend bracket, but in ancient or divine, it's not gonna happen. Your monkey is really strong, and the SF didn't actually TP to top. He decided to jungle farm. And please don't dive. Oh, you can go for Leech Seed and then dive. No, I didn't. 
Let's hit here one more time. I think you're gonna actually go for the leech seed right there. Killed, yeah. You could actually go for a leech seed like Im almost immediately after killing the uh, void spirit, and then that will slow down the uh, punch, and then you can dive in there. And another thing in here that I um, observe, Q punch, is that y you're not checking the status of your enemy. Like right here, y you're issuing the attacks and then the movement in here, but you didn't check his actual status. Like only the Monkey King. If if you realize that this punch doesn't have enough mana for for the uh, for the uh, mid hook, I think you will commit in there. And knowing that the uh, SF was here and then go back to to mid, that means um the, the enemy can can only react in one way, which is the safe lane will TP to help the punch, right? Either the witch doctor or the Urza will TP to um help this punch because you're going to dive to him. And if you manage to force rotations uh, from this lane, um, that's actually a really great space. And uh, potentially the LC and then the Hoodwink will take advantage of that space and harass the uh, the remaining hero in the bottom lane. So yeah, gathering info is really important because uh, once you gather info, Radiant the next question is how do you take advantage of this info? And for me, as of now, it feels like you're, you're playing too passive for me, um, Q Pudge, at least. You're, you're kind of passive to me. And you're, you're trying to gank in here. Nice micromanagement right there for the, uh, for the uh, illusion room. Um, I mean, top lane is actually fine. Maybe try to connect with the, with the bottom lane and then go for trial lane. Uh, th th that will give the enemy um, info about the uh, observer ward right there. And it's not actually the greatest, um, what to call this? Illusion. Nature's grass right there. Because here, you could just play right here and then use the grass right like this. Right? Um, if you, if you use, if you use the uh, grass right there, um, the punch, the punch option is only go like this. But if the punch will go like this, the uh, Lena will be able to connect and then kill the punch, right? But but since your uh, your uh, nature's grass is like this, um, he just managed to go south and then escape. So yeah, critical thinking um, and spell usage something that you you, you need to. Um, Take advantage of as well, and yeah, you're, you're going back to to top. I think it's not needed. You're not needed in the top lane anymore. You're actually bidding a uh, dead horse at this point. If I were you, I would just go to the um, freaking bottom lane, and you're gonna solo kill this guy. You might even die. I didn't. Elsie died. Okay. With the uh, witch doctor, and then Pudge is actually rotating now because he know that the lane is over. You could actually be in here for like two, one or two minutes ago, but yeah, at least you 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 went in here, which is a good thing. But it feels like you're kind of late. If the top lane or if the laning stage is over for your partner, try to make something happen. Either you stack. Or you go to other lane. Although the trend protector is actually not the greatest when it comes to stacking. At least it's still good. At least you're still doing something. Fudge died. Uh, or is it actually survived? You don't need to living armor yourself. You have the tranquil boots. So. Akon shot maybe? I did it. I didn't go for holy shit. Go commit commit. Chase him. Nice. You have your ulti now. Um do you have observer wards? Now focus on sieging this tower first. Um since you're trent yeah, this is actually nice. I like this. Since you're trent, you should actually go in here. Like much deeper. 
um, in this way, you will be able to scout if someone will TP in the lane because um, you you are providing vision, and in that sense, you could actually uh, you would know which heroes TP and yeah, okay, still good. Um, Elsie will die, no? Nah. They're actually late, although it's a good space that you have in here. Five man rotation. Um, I hope that your Lena or your anyone else in here will take advantage of it. Like pushing wise. Nah. Can can you actually still push in here? Just imagine if you actually um scouted this area before they actually TP. What are the heroes doing? I think this guy will TP. Yeah. SF. Yeah, it TP and then he got cancelled, yeah. I was wondering why the uh, Void Spirit did not arrive in there. So that's the um, answer to it. Can you push in here? Um, you should you should still siege the uh, bottom tier one. No need to go to the uh, to the mid. So uh, at this point, you, you actually saw that the SF is uh, leaving the bottom lane, and yeah, Lena managed to secure it. Uh, but if you're actually in there, maybe you could go on the uh, on the Ursa as well because he doesn't have ult. But yeah, it's fine. You're farming in here. Farm, farm, farm. What's the what's the item that you're going for in here? That cook. And you will die, maybe? Yeah. Map awareness. That's the only uh, way that they could um, get a kill in here. Especially on you. Only uh, Pudge mid hook. Unless uh, Witch Doctor is actually near as well and then the, uh, the Void Spirit is committing everything on you. Or SFS like fuels or anything. Thanks, mate. I mean, mate. But yeah, uh, what's your next step in here? You, you have 1200 gold. Vlad's? Not sure about Vlad's though. What's your reasoning behind Vladimir's in, in this particular game? Like, you, you have so many golds, like 1200, which is actually nice for a support. And there. I will not actually go for Vlad's first item. As strength protector. May I know your reasoning behind the item? Um, Q Podge? I thought, uh, Vlad... I, I bought Vlad. I was thinking I have three cores that, that's uh, man fighting and with Siege Towers. Okay. Well, you, you have the Monkey King and then the uh, LC that will that actually have like natural um, life steal, and Lena is kind of glass cannon build. You're not actually wrong about it, but to me, it, it's kind of um, it's kind of overkill for the item. Well, let's go back in here. Maybe this is one of the uh, things that you said why you are losing the uh, mid lane. Um, think about this for a second here. Like, I actually like the observer ward in here, but I, I don't like the um, the the dive right here. There's so much wrong thing in here. What item would you suggest? Um, it depends on your playstyle if you want to play defensive or aggressive, or do you want to be healer? Um, uh, since the enemy have like Ursa that loves right clicking people, same thing for up. Uh, but when it comes to the SF, it's more of a setup. Like if he's going for Yules, yeah, he, he actually went for Yules. Um, he's going for Yules as well, and then punch for the positioning, like like with the uh, mid hook. Um, I'm actually thinking of going for um. Uh, I will go for four staff. That's one of the uh, items that I'm suggesting or thinking in here. For staff, um, if not for staff, I'll go for Solar Crest in this game. 
Or if not Solar Crest, I will go for Glimmer Cake. Those items. Or if you're still not content with those things, you can go for um, Healing Route, like Holy Locket. And they they need to play, or they need to get something like um, a vessel or Shiva's Guard or Skadi to cancel to um, to counter your healing potential. So yeah, th those three items because um, in that way you will be able to kite them, especially the uh, the Ursa, like four staff glimmer, you know, and also you'll be able to save your teammates from danger with a four staff or glimmer. And Solar Crest overall is really good on Trent as well. For defensive and aggressive purposes, because um, you can use the buff to your Monkey King or to your Elsie or to your um, Lina. And it will solve the mana issues that you're having as well. Solar Crest. It's actually nice. Uh, this fight, I, I messed up because I didn't think of my hood and Lina's position. Yeah, that that's, that's mainly the reason in here. Um, and then you actually went for the wrong target as well. Like, look at the target that you're going for. I mean, you don't have a specific target in there, and there are two targets that, that, that you need to burst in there. First is the Witch Doctor, since you're diving, um, and then you are close to each other, the uh, the Paralyzing cast will bounce to you, to you and your diving partner. And the uh, Requiem of Souls, it, it, um, you actually saw the, uh, the SF casting the Requiem of Souls and then you went for your root immediately, which is actually nice. Um, this is actually one of the trolls that you are... It, it could be really solved with proper communication and then proper uh, read on the map, like positioning wise. I wonder if you talk to your team, like, um, are we going to dive right now? Uh, should we go right now? You know, those kind of those kind of initiations or communications. Um, if it's me, I will go for uh, before I go before after I planted the observer, I will check the uh, location of the team, and I will say, um, should we go now? And possibly the uh, your team will actually react to it, like go 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 or something like that, or not yet, you know. Communication, yeah, it's actually a really good thing. And yeah, you actually switch up to um, medallion. Okay. Um, imagine as well if you have four step right there, you'll be able to bail out your one of your teammates right there. That's where an paralyzing cast. And healing ward. Wait, wait, wait. What happened here? So you actually saw them in here. Monkey King is um, farming bottom, and then you you saw the Witch Doctor, and then Void Spirit, and then Punch right here. They destroyed the Observer. You're 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 kind of healing the um, the tower, and then look at your teammates. They actually went for small. The Elsie and then the Hoodwing, and then the Monkey King is connecting, and then trying to kill this Witch Doctor. But uh, the Lina is actually close as well. But the uh, greatest question here is why are you still going in the top lane and then trying to farm? You have TP. You have vision advantage earlier. You could actually TP to the bottom like almost immediately right there. But nah, you're just watching them. And then Lina is actually um, gonna be there now. Yeah, you're still farming in here. Lina is kind of winning the fight. Okay, and you managed to actually farm this without being told by your teammates to play with them. And they killed Delina. So all of your cores actually died in that engagement. And look, look at the um, gold change. It's not really worth it. And do you think that farming in here is worth it like you have fortification and no one aside from Ursa is playing in the top lane um if you actually win that fight in the bottom I think you could get the tier 2 in there but yeah you're content with farming you're a trend protector by the way remember that it's actually hard for you to solo kill someone 
And the best thing that you could do as a trend protector is actually defending tower, delaying the game. But since the enemy is not pushing, there's no need for you to be in there into defensive position. Finally, you're TPing, but again, you're late. You're position 5. And then your offlane and then your carry and then mid is the one creating space for you. Not the other way around. Okay, rooted the SF. Back up for now. Kill the SF. Kill the... Yeah, that's nice. So, the, the range creeps are... The range creeper is actually hitting you. That means they, they have vision on the hill right there. Because you're not you're not showing yourself, right? Why you're not getting sentry, by the way? You see how strong your spells are? Overgrowth and the nature's grass? It actually made it happen. If you're not in there and then you didn't use the overgrowth, the, the fight will not turn around. And even without item, you're actually useful. And like what I told you earlier, it is warded. See it right here? Those small details, you need to take advantage of them. Especially if you're going to stick with the support. Like right here? You are you are in the trees and then the, the, the uh, range creep is hitting you? There's no way that um the, the wards are in here or here, you know? It's always on the hill because it can see you. You need to take advantage of those. And see how you back off in here. Okay, they can see still the uh, Monkey King. Lena TP'd to the top lane. And Monkey King, um, get out as well. And yeah, you decided to farm in here. Or you're going to farm, which is kind of aggressive. And you get punished. See how, uh, 261 golds for killing him. It's a small gold, but, um, a kill is a kill. You know? Since it's going to be 4 versus 5, um, the enemy will be able to um, take over or at least um, get back their territories. Because you're dead. They're, they're not going to be afraid to leave the base now. They're actually Your teammates are actually playing defensive now because you just died and then they don't have any vision now. Roshan, yep. This is another thing. Ursa. If there's Ursa, you don't see him. Roshan. And yeah, no more sentry again. Okay, now you have sentry. Holy locket. Alright. It's actually good. They actually have Roshan or Aegis. And then they're, they're trying to go to the mid. Um, you should just trade the tower. And yeah, they're actually going in there. Maybe get out now. Get out right now. Why you guys are trying to fight this? It's kind of difficult because they have ages, but maybe you can make it happen. What the fuck? You just use the uh, sharpshooter. Ah, not worth it. Overgrowth. Punches in there. Maybe just go for nature's grasp first. Um, your initiation actually gives up the idea that it is warded in there. And another thing, um, Q Podge is that you, you never, you never de-warded that hill. And then you even reduce your armor right here. So what went wrong in here? For the longest time, this ward is up. Okay, so they they kill the um, they kill the tower. Monkey King, they, they can see the Monkey King. They can see the Lena. They can see the Elsie. They're actually centering in here. You should be centering in here. And yeah. Fudge. Presence of mind. Um, another thing as well, Q Fudge, is that I, I suggest you don't use your ulti just for a mere position 5 as well. We're talking about Witch Doctor in here. 
uh, which is the, their hard support and then you're spending your 100 second cooldown spell just to get a kill on the position 5 of the enemy so maybe um, think twice about your spell usage and then the um, hero priority so all of your advantage is actually getting uh, you know d diminished it's depleting now uh, maybe one or two more fights the uh, game is over one or two more fights playing sentry in here ah you even smoked and and indeed Your team is actually bad when it comes to the uh, map reading. Like, even before that thing happened. Get right here. Uh. So you guys, um, you know, uh, Podge, SF, Ursa, Void Spirit, they, they are still in the bottom, right? Four heroes. Actually five because of this uh, Witch Doctor as well. And then look at your Monkey King. Since the enemy is not actually going to the bottom, that means they are possibly playing jungle or playing to the mid lane now. Only Ursa throwed in here because he got um, Aegis as well. You cannot easily go on him. So this guy's positioning is really bad. Uh, map reading. Um, as a support, q -Podge, although this is not your fault, um, one thing that you could do is actually warn your teammates, especially your carry, that um, if they're in a really weird place that you think that they will die you should tell them to get get out of that area as soon as possible shout at them if possible because your support um if 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 your cores are dying like stupidly in that way you're not going to win the game because um he will not be able to uh scale because he's dead so it, it's kind of your your not actually your responsibility, but at least you you, you could try to tell them to um to uh, play properly on the map, you know, like this one. You're actually you're actually telling the Lena that the Pudge is missing, and you're you're using the X ping, which means get back in there, which is actually nice. So. Another thing that I could say is that prevention is better than cure. So instead of um, something, yeah, engagement is not really looking good. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Prevention is always better than cure. Like, ah, uh, shit, they will. You guys will lose the fight. Um, did you guys know that you're actually? Playing from behind, and the enemy still have ages. Maybe try to uh, wait for it to expire first instead of forcing these things. So this is the two fights that I've mentioned, and the game is totally in their favor. Uh, I feel like at this point of the game, um, the game is over. At this point of the game, like mentally, mentally the game is over. For your team. Dyer's middle tower is not what it used so to be. the question Dyer's is so that I have in here. Um, do, do you have any question for me, Q Podge, regarding this game? Anything in your mind to um, no. about the analysis so far? Because we, we can always play this replay, like proceed with it. Um, but I don't see that it will make much difference. You guys, um, after they got ages, after they got ages, um, all of the fights that happened is is actually in their favor. Um, the, the only thing that you tried to make things happen, like the enemies playing in your in your condition, is actually this, but it failed um, because of this. Because uh, I could say that it's actually mainly because of you, because you didn't. You didn't realize this, even though the range creeps are hitting in here. 
you know, those small details will actually win the game. Since you failed this observer, you failed to notice this observer ward, you died in here, and you lose the fight, and then you lose the advantage, and then they just connect in here, even though you have vision. Yeah, the game is over. You say things I don't think during uh, about during the game. Okay. Um, it's a good thing that you your op your eyes are actually open now when it comes to your um, trend or to your gameplay. And yeah, you're, you're still farming in here. No, while you're casting your Q right there. I mean, if if someone will farm in that camp, you should give it to your core. While you're even trying to contest with it, you already finished your item like Holy Locket. Uh, it, this is actually the best time for you to go for the smoke play. And then make things happen, especially that you still have vision over them. This is actually this is really the best chance that you could have right now. No ages, you still have the uh, items that you need to fight. Look at here, uh, BKB Echo Saber, MKB on Lena, Blade Mill on the um, LC with Blink. I I think it's still doable. This game is still winnable if you just uh, went for smoke play like immediately. But I guess. Yeah, you lost your will to fight because you're kind of reacting to them now instead of instead of making something happen. You are just waiting for something to happen and then you are reacting to it. You're not playing Dota basically. You're just reacting to them playing Dota. This is the uh, this is one of the uh, bad things that I don't really like. If I'm the one reacting to the enemy's play, 100% or 99% of the time I will lose the fucking game. Because you always play around the condition of the enemy. And you're just hoping that they will commit mistakes. Like throw the game. Which in rank, it's less likely to happen. Right? Yeah. Now your, your, your enemy know that you're all in here. Especially with this observer. You really failed to capitalize on this vision. The enemy, on the other hand, is seriously taking advantage of all of the vision that they have. Like they are playing with their vision always. Yeah, you're just waiting in here. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Blade mail. Uh please don't go on Pudge. Go, go on the Ursa. He didn't use the ulti. Oh shit. He didn't use the ulti yet. So he could actually go for duel and then burst the guy with the Laguna and the Monkey King. That's it, yeah. Void Spirit is in there. SF is actually playing in there. Bit of, um, yeah, your team don't have any more confidence to actually um, win the game, I think. Holy Locket, okay. Monkey is still alive. But the monkey thing cannot actually stand toe to toe now, right? So maybe if Solar Crest has been completed or Force Staff has been completed, maybe it can make a difference instead of Holy Locket. Team Wipe with a buyback on the Lina, at least. Sign of Life. But you need like two or three more fights like this. Going for first half, yeah. Um, get smoke. Roshan is actually the next objective to play around. Roshan. Wait, why you're not playing around Rosh? By the way, do, do, do you take note of the Rosh time? I think you did not. You need to learn how to take note of the Roshan timer. Because in that way, um, you will be able to um, to make a call for your team. Let's say 30-43, that's the time that they killed the Roche and then take the Aegis. Um, it will expire by 35-43. The soonest respawn of the Rochen is 38-43 and the uh, longest time is 41-43. So you, you need to know how to do these things. Those Roshan timer. And yeah, you, you, you just let the uh, let the uh, Regent team take advantage of the Roshan, even though you just win, win a uh, team fight. Um, after you win a team fight, you could actually plant more division in their enemy jungle, 
but you guys didn't do anything about it, so yeah. Sign of life, but again, sign of death again, and split push. She actually get away with it at least. That's a die back on Lena. Um, yeah, you, you, you could delay the, the push right here with your natures. Living armor as well, yeah. Oh, Elsie died. Fucking hell. Living armor again, yeah. Keep doing it. Careful about the uh, hook. Hook, yeah. Monkey King is committing. By the way, there's an agent on the um, Ursa. Okay. You didn't actually save for buyback. I even though you cannot complete your four staff, you keep buying those items. And yeah, you don't have buyback and then Lena is still dead. Good thing um the enemy is not hitting the hook because if if they can actually hit the hook, I think they will actually push. And another thing is that they don't have or you guys don't have the uh, Wukong's command right there in the defense and Lena is still dead. Maybe they should go. They should dive. They still have ages. Try it by 43. Yep. You actually left the base and yeah, GG. The art of zoning and playing around vision. So yeah, uh, I think we can we can agree that um, when it comes to this game, the uh, vision game is really the, the game winning. Right here. Vision and then positioning. Uh, something that um, you could avoid if you stop following your hero like for, for the most part with your camera it's always on your on your hero like on your turn protector you, you're not even checking the other yeah you're dead gg do you have any question to me though um q podge anything that you could ask for that's the only thing that i could say to you like regarding your replay and I just wanted to uh, work on it first and then let me know if the analysis is helpful or not. Because there's a lot of things that I can talk about it. But I don't want to overwhelm you with the info. Questions? Or we're good? How do you identify where the uh, valuable, uh, val valuable wards are? Are for your team. Um, I actually, I actually like your observer wards, especially in the bottom area, like in the tier two, because um, putting vision in there is uh, gonna help you secure the objective, which is the tier two bottom, right? In which, um, when it comes to the observer ward, I, for me personally. I will go for observer that will lead to objective. And when I say objective, um, tower or erosion or pick off, like, especially uh, picking off the important target. Let's say, uh, enemy has a PA or Templar assassin or anyone that can clear ancients. I'll go for observer ward in there, like early on. But yeah, in the mid game, um, you, you guys always play around vision. Because if you are not going to play Vision, like you're playing in the uh, dark side of the map, possibly the enemy have Vision on you in there, and yeah, you could lose the fight. Even if you are ahead, if you are playing under the enemy's Vision, they can always um, they can always make something happen out of it. Like your Lina is really is really farmed. She's really strong. She can always dish out like. She can kill anyone in the game, but if the enemy can go to her first, all of her net worth is basically useless because she is dead, right? The damage is the damage is high, but if you're dead, the damage is nothing. It's zero. Vision, yep. 
Objective. Go for objective always for vision. So that's the uh, that's the good ward for uh, aggressive purposes. Yes, uh, but when it comes to the defensive ones, you need to predict where the enemy is gonna play. Um, let's say they're going to play mid, like push the mid lane. Uh, maybe drop a drop an observer right there, um, and then scout the um, hero that can help them siege the high ground. Something like Pudge. You know, those kind of heroes. You just need to predict where, where, where they're going to play. For defensive and aggressive purposes. Think about it. You know? And if you always plant the observers, like, like almost every game, same spot, there's a problem with your sporting. You are not clearly reading the map. The state of the game and everything. Because uh, it, it only um, showed to me that you're too comfortable with that placement of Observer and you're not trying to improve your uh, map control game. Every ward has their own purposes or you know reasoning behind it. So yeah, itemization, uh, vision, and also spell usage and then the target. Those four things is the uh, most crucial in this game at least for your trend and lastly the communication that's that's the last one um remember when you warned the lena in the mid lane like, like the uh, punch is missing when the uh, monkey king died that's actually nice but maybe you know maybe um do it much sooner instead of um notifying your team like later so yeah Supports are have a lot of time into reading the uh, the map, so take advantage of it, and also check the items of the enemy. So yeah, are we good? Because if you don't have any questions, I'm going to uh, put a check mark on your request in here, and yeah, play a game or two or even a day, and then let me know if it's helpful by sending me um, analysis feedback. In my server. Okay? Um, Q punch? No response? Okay. Thank you for your time, Q punch. And good luck and have fun with your games.